<laughs> there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to finally introduce you to the How to Put Gary's Mod on Your Chromebook tutorial. Yes, that is right, ladies and gentlemen. So, here we go. The first thing that you want to make sure, absolutely sure, is that you can run Linux. So we're going to come over here to our Chromebook settings. We're going to come down here to Advanced. Actually, you know what? Go to About Chrome OS and check for updates. Make sure this puppy is up to date. All right. Anyway, so, uh, uh, we're gonna come over here to this thing that says Developers, and we're gonna there's there'll be a button here that says Turn on Linux. And in fact, in fact, let me just go ahead and power wash my entire Chromebook right now, so I can show you fellas exactly what this process is gonna be looking like. Okay, pimps, I'm back. I'm back. So I've just power washed my entire god dang Chromebook. What the first thing that we're gonna want to do is is come over here to our settings, okay? And what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna wanna we're gonna wanna come over here to advanced, then then developers, okay? Then we're gonna wanna click turn on right here where it says Linux development. If you don't have this option. You're probably on a school Chromebook, or your mom set something weird up for you. If you want to get past this, enable developer mode on your Chromebook. And no, that doesn't mean going to About Chrome OS and going to Additional Details and changing your channel to the Developer Channel. That's not how that works. Uh, you have to actually go through the full setup and process uh, um, of power washing and all that. But first of all, Turn on Linux development environment and click next. You can put in whatever you want. That's my full name there. Editor, blur that out. I don't want nobody coming and finding me. Uh, so we're going to do custom here. And Gary's mod on Linux is probably, I don't know how many gigabytes. It's in the realm between 2 and, and 9 gigabytes on Linux. Uh, I think it might be 9 gigabytes on Windows, but uh, regardless, I have a terabyte, so I'm just going to go ahead and crank that baby up there and hit install. Now, it'll go through this whole installing Linux thing. Uh, if, for whatever reason, it says failed, and I'll show you exactly what that'll look like in a second, uh, it's, it's a Wi-Fi problem, and you'll have to switch Wi-Fi's. Okay, like I said, it says error installing Linux. If, if this happens, you're going to hit cancel. You're going to come over here. You're going to change your Wi-Fi to, if you have 5G, change it over to regular to your regular Wi-Fi. Uh, I don't know if that's a problem with anybody else. And they're just going to click this arrow. You're going to click remove Linux, delete. And you're going to click turn on. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like it looks like we are all done with this. Okay, so once it's finished installing, a terminal window will pop open. Now, this might look scary to you, but do not be alarmed, my friends. This is very simple. All you need to do is type sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade y. That's all you have to type in. Uh... I might leave this command in the description, probably not, because it's very simple. All you have to do is just type this out, hit enter, and it will do everything for you. Now, all, all this is doing is updating your packages on Linux. Whenever you want to install something, uh, you, you, you do it through the command line, okay? Otherwise, you're just, what, what even are you? Okay? All right, so once this is done, we can type out clear, command clear, press enter, and we get a nice little clear, you know, you know? All right? All right, so... The first step, uh, and this is probably going to be the last step for a lot of you, it, uh, to find out if your Chromebook is compatible with Steam and, and will be able to, to run Steam to get Gary's mod, uh, you type in uname-m. Now, the, it, what, whatever pops up right here, if it's what I have, x86-64, then you're good to go. Everything is fine. Everything is dandy. If it says uh, like something like Arch64, Arch you're out of luck. All right? I'm sorry. I can't help you. There's nothing you can do. Okay? 
unless you want to look up some steam on arc but it's just it's not possible okay so uh another thing that i like to do is just install build essential and you honestly don't have to do that this is just something that i like to do on a fresh install the, the next thing you're going to want to do is come over here to store.steampower.com all right now once you're on the steam website you're going to want to come up here to where it says install steam and you're going to click this little icon down here okay it's going to download and we're going to we're going to we don't have to move it over actually we can just hit save the steam installer and we can close that of that let's clear this and now we're going to open up our files we're going to come into our downloads or wherever you saved it we're going to right click and press install with linux okay now we're going to hit install all right Okay, so now that we have Steam installed, we can hit the search bar here and just type in Steam. It's right there. It will pull up. It'll look, it might look something like this. If you get a screen like this, <laughs> just press enter and uh, it's going to work its magic. Uh, press return to proceed with the installation. Press enter. We're going to type in Y and press enter. Or you could just press enter, it doesn't matter. Okay, now finally it just says press return to continue, so I'm going to press enter. And here we go, updating Steam runtime environment. And yeah, so if you've used Steam before, this will look very familiar to you. The only difference is that the text looks a little weird. Uh, yeah, but once this is done, uh, uh, you're going to go ahead and sign in, and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, unpacking Steam runtime. Here we go. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> All right. So, signing in. Now, if you don't have a Steam account, obviously, you're going to need to go and create one. Uh, you probably should have done that before doing all this. I forgot to mention that, but uh, it should be a given. Should be should be something obvious. Gary's mod is on Steam, uh, and if you're looking to pirate Gmod and play it on your Chromebook, the only way that you're gonna be able to do that is through Wine and a program called Play on Linux or a program called Crossover. Uh. <sighs> 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 I don't think that's going to work. I've actually never tried that before. Uh, but here we go. We're in Steam. We're literally in Steam right now on our Chromebooks. And uh, for those of you who don't know, S Steam is going to be officially and natively supported on Chromebooks here pretty soon anyway. Uh, and not through Linux, but... All right, so I'm going to go ahead and full screen this. Also, by the way, if you want to close out of the terminal, type exit. And then do Control W to close the window. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna full screen Steam here. Uh, the next thing that we're gonna want to do is come over here to Library Home. And actually, if we come up here to where it says Steam, and this is gonna be pretty slow, and then we go to Settings. We're going to want to come down to compatibility, and I'm going to full screen this so that I can read it. That didn't help at all. Never mind. Uh, we're going to check both of these boxes, but let's do just check the top one for now if that's not already checked. But Gary's Mod is a Linux game, so we shouldn't have any problems just installing this right now. It looks like it only needs, what is that, 3 gigabytes? That's not bad at all. I'm going to click Install. Uh, uncheck. Make sure both these are unchecked. We're going to hit Install. And Accept. Sure, whatever. Accept. And this is now going to go ahead and begin the installation process. Now, as you can see, and as you probably already guessed, any game that runs on Linux 
uh, you will be able to install. That's not to say you can play them, okay? Let's get this straight. Just because you install it does not mean your, comp your Chromebook is good enough to run the game. But uh, for me, I've been able to run most of the games that I can run on my terrible PC or laptop. I have a Core i5 10th gen processor and an Intel Evo dedicated, or not dedicated, uh, integrated graphics. So, you know, it's it's not the best out there, but I can run Ravenfield at pretty good settings, 200 bots. I can run uh, pretty much any source game you could run. I've tried launching up Counter-Strike uh, CSGO, but the problem with some of these games is that it'll auto-detect and think that you're running the best build on the planet and then just set all of your settings to the highest they can go. And I wasn't able to get out of the dang menu in Counter-Strike. Like, I like to change my graphic settings down to the lowest. It, it, it literally ran at like 0 0.01 frames per second. Ugh, it was miserable, but I'm positive that you could run the game if you turn it down to low settings. I'm, I'm positive, but anyway. So I will be back when this is done downloading. All right, for this part of the video, um, I actually changed my settings on the recording so that I could record on my base monitor so I can squeeze as much performance as I can out of this. But as you can see, it's all done installing, and I'm going to come just come back here to my library and uh, ready to play. There we are, Gary's Mod. And uh, I think we can just hit play and run this out of the box. Ah, here we go. Vulcan, Vulcan. If you have a computer that can support Vulcan drivers and all that. All right, here we go. All right, I'm, I'm actually super excited. Oh my god, look at this. And I do have a shice a ton of workshop mods here. So I'll just let those install and I'll be right back. All right, so all the workshop mods are done and now we just have Gary's mod. So I'm going to go ahead and just start a new game here. Single player, flat grass, why not? We're just going to hit start. All right, I'm in, and this is without changing any of the um, graphic settings or anything like that. I'm getting maybe uh, 20 FPS, I don't know. So let me get, go over some graphic settings real quick here. So I don't know if you guys can see this, but if we come over to video, and I'm going to change the resolution to 1920 by 1080 and hit apply. <clears throat> All right, there we go. Let's see what that alone does for the frame rate. Probably getting 30 now. Less. I'm probably getting less than. Yeah, probably still around 20. It didn't do too much, but turning that resolution down substantially will get a ton of frame rate. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. We'll get a ton of frames. <laughs> My bad. I'm going to go ahead and change it to 720p. 1280 by 720. Hit apply. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Alright, so next we're going to go to the stuff that actually matters, advanced. So, I'm going to go ahead and go to none. So, you want to set everything to star. So, if it has the star by it, then set it to the star. And if your frame rate is extremely low right now, then I feel bad for you. But try and get these changed to the recommended settings. Uh, and then, uh, what the, do I not have to hit apply? What's going on here? So I changed them all to the star. And once you do that, um, okay, I hit okay. So it looks like it's applying the settings. So I'll just let it do its thing right now. Okay, it looks like it has to reload everything. Yep, it's got to reload everything. All right. Okay, I'm back. And wow, holy Jesus. This is really good frames. So uh, I'm recording right now at 1080p 30fps, but in-game, I'm definitely getting over... I'm getting a lot. I'm getting a lot of frames here. Uh, there is a little bit of tearing, but... Eh. 
me personally, I don't mind it. And I'm sure I could change the resolution back to something like 1080p just to show you. Uh, there we go. 1080p, I'm going to hit apply. And yeah, I'm still getting solid frames. Holy Jesus. Again, I'm not sure what you guys are going to be able to see in the recording, but for me, uh, it's a lot. So some of you doubters might be saying, oh, this is fake. This is all fake. Like, he, he's not on his Chromebook. Like, I don't know what. I, I got some comments. I got some comments on some of my shorts saying that what I was doing was fake in the videos. And and I'm here to just debunk that right now. Look at this. I hit the search bar and boom. I'm I'm on, I'm literally on my Chrome, but here it is, right here, Gary's mod, right down here. I can click on it, and uh, it, it it's right there. So that kind of actually broke everything when I did that. But uh, yeah, same thing with Team Fortress 2. If you saw my Team Fortress 2 videos, all you have to do is just do this whole setup with Steam, and then come and find like you can do Left 4 Dead 2, any game on Steam. Stumble Guys, in fact, I was playing Stumble Guys, ATS, Terraria, like any of these games, bro. And if you want a better, like even certain Windows games will work. Like I said with that compatibility thing earlier, you can use Proton. So if I just come over here to a game like Battlefield 1, for example, uh, it says available for Windows. And you try to install it and nothing works, right? So you come up here to Steam, you come up here to Settings. You go down to compatibility and enable Steam Play for all other titles. Now it's going to say restart required, so we're going to hit this blue button to restart Steam. Okay, so now that I have that enabled, it says stream. That's only because I have it installed on my uh, actual PC. But if you click on this computer, you can see I can go ahead and install Battlefield 1. Now I have no idea how Battlefield 1 is going to play on this Chromebook. And I actually might do a whole video on that and maybe a YouTube short on that somewhere down the line if if I end up getting it installed and everything runs and works pretty well. That's all for this video. Uh, uh, Y'all are great, and I'll see you all in the next one.